We're here to talk about ES guitars. Right. And we're here uh, among many ES guitars, some of which you use regularly in the studio. Well, the older I get, they cover up getting old. Well, They're really yeah. good. It's like a heavy makeup and bass. Well, that's kind of what I wanted to get into today is is how you like to use them, like how you like your favorite players, your favorite tones you get out of them, how you see them compared to other instruments, like how versatile they are. And so we'll we'll kind of dig into all of that. What is your uh, like knowledge of how this model came to be and when? I don't think I cared about the history of it when I first got into them. I think this is what got me into it. Watching the cream final performance. Yep. I see Eric Clapton play one with the block inlays. I thought mm -hmm. it was so cool. Looking. The 64, just like the, that's a 64. Because he has this yeah. beautiful SG that was painted and you know, people yep. know him synonymous with strats and that's always a cool look. But just seeing Eric with this, yeah, I thought it was the coolest looking thing I'd ever seen. You and know? that, like, when I think about that guitar, I think of Crossroads and playing that song and yeah. just getting that like surprisingly fat yet. And it was a three trebly, piece band, and yeah. it was occupying a lot of space oh, yeah. with one guitar. I think that's I think that's what kind of gave it to me with with three thirty fives and you know Freddie King. I think Freddie King with his yes that that's, oh yeah that's probably the most iconic coolest guy yep. and best guitar player. And not to mention Chuck Berry too, you know, seeing oh, yeah. Chuck, seeing Chuck with those. I think he was, you know, when you think about rock and roll, he's probably the originator of rock and roll yep. guitar, you know, and, and he, he played it. Yes. You Makes know? me think of back to the future. Totally. Like, Michael Mario, J. Fox, yeah. for yeah. sure. Michael J. Yeah. Fox. He, he made it look good. Too. <laughs> he did. Yeah. I, I, that's probably, that might've been the first time I ever noticed one actually yeah. back to the future. Yeah, that's true. Out of the hollow body guitars, it's always been the most rock and roll, mm -hmm. you know, I mean, I, I was always a rock kid growing up and just, you can you can play you can sound sophisticated but also it has that same you can kick into the same gear as you can play free all right now and it sounds right so ted mccarty uh right. actually had the concept for the yes it's like the one guitar that he said was like truly his own creation his own baby really and they were making some other thin line guitars in the mid 50s like the 225 yeah which is a great guitar as well but this was the, his idea to put the solid block in the middle to get capture some of that solid body tone because there was that rock and roll revolution happening. I've always thought it was because of feedback. Well, I, th I assume that's what it was. So the, with the rock and roll revolution, higher volumes, you know, more gain. And I assume he was he was looking to either limit the feedback or mimic the success of the solid body guitars. Either way. I like it. I like. I've always liked these things a lot. And uh, I think there's one I chased for years and years, which is. Uh, this one over here. Oh yeah, you gotta show us that. I felt like I got my, you know, one of my first real playing guitars that sounded like the records I chased because I was always trying to, sound, you know, make records sound like Jimmy Page's guitar tone or Clapton and Cream or whatever it was. And this is the first guitar I think I got years ago that really nailed that sound, you know? And, and this has been, I'm assuming, all over a ton of your records. It's on a ton of records and I keep trying to beat it. I'm always looking for one that's got one better, but not, this seems to be the one. And I had another really killer one, a 61, and one of the people that I work with, this guy Jason Isbell, pried it out of my hands. <laughs> he bugged me until I sold it to him. And we have this really great picture of, you know, I'm, he's got the guitar in his hand, I just sold it to him. And um, he's smiling and I look like I'm about to cry. Because <laughs> I didn't think I could replace it. And the, and the day I sold that to him, I got this one. You know, because I've been nice. eyeing this one for years and just happened to come up. But I always feel incomplete without a 335 around. It just feels like a guitar that marries, you know, that kind of beatle sound, mm -hmm. don't let me down kind of yeah. thing with with nailing, you know, like a reference before Free All Right Now and Jimmy yeah. Page. And and it just, it, se it seems like, you know, you can really get those kind of, you know, stacks kind of guitar sounds out of them too, even though they weren't. I don't know if they were using these, but it does does that really you, cool. Yeah, you can like if you do that like offset volume yeah, thing. Exactly. You can, yeah. There's always a magic spot in there. Yep. Isn't there? Just leading into what we're doing currently, so obviously we were building amazing instruments in Memphis, and that whole facility was dedicated to ES guitars. Right. But uh, with our new leadership and and ownership, uh, we wanted to bring it back to Nashville. And with that opportunity, we also redeveloped uh, the cu custom shop historic reissues to get them that much more like the original. So we started off with great guitars, but now it's like 
about those geek details that you know I love, like getting the exact right contours on the top and back. So we recut the original press plate to do that exact contour on the top and back. And actually, your no buddy, uh, J.D. Simo, helped us with that too, because he's like, he's got when it's right, it's name. right. And he's got that killer 61, just like this one, actually. So yeah, that's a guy that could have any guitar in the world. And he, yeah. His primary guitar is a red 335. And every and time I see it, it's 62? More, is this a 62? Warm. Uh, yeah, 62, that's right. Yeah. His is blocks, right? Yeah. yeah. I thought it was great. You showed me earlier, which I didn't even know about the yeah, so, yeah, little things. I, I, don't, I don't even pay attention to that 59 stuff. 59 is going to have the, the white buttons, and then you have aluminum buttons, and then and this is a 61 reissue, so you got the double ring tuners. That has Grover's, obviously, but you have a 59 there. Yeah, it's great. So many details. that. Yeah, I should probably be holding that one. Huh? Yeah, yeah. That's, that's uh, more akin one for one with your guitar. But see some of the things that we we did it or like a font getting that dialed in and getting the right uh, crown on the headstock the truss rod cover is now like layered in the same way as the original so we we really wanted to go all out with the the details because that's the vintage experience like yeah like if you don't have the means to afford or find an original 335 you know, we want to make sure that you're buying the next best thing. I love old guitars, but I would be way more happy to go and buy something brand new that sounded and felt like an old guitar. Mm -hmm. That's kind of the idea is like, not necessarily to replicate how they age, but what were they doing at yeah. that time to make them so good? Because a lot of people think electronics age over time or get, or sure the, you know, the wood ages for sure, but really a lot of that tone and sound comes from the wiring harness and the pickups. And so that's why we went to that like true uh, vintage taper potentiometers and and uh, paper and oil capacitors, and then the unpotted custom buggers, which you helped us develop a few years ago. It's it's such a fun thing. I mean, the pickups is something that I remember getting into guitars and buying new guitars and playing with aftermarket pickups forever. Mm -hmm. And I think the last couple of things that I've gotten from you guys, I just I don't mess with them. I love the way that you test guitars, like like between you know any you could have. Five vintage guitars and five new guitars, but you don't care. You're just looking for that sound in your head. Yeah. I think that's cool. It's one sound. Yeah. Oh, yeah. One of the other things we did was um, replicated the, th the thinness of the body. Really? We scanned like five original 59s, I think three 61s, four 64s. So you're talking about the depth here? The depth, yeah. But we have I this. Know. I didn't know they were any different. Crazy new scanning technology now where you can just wave a wand over a guitar and it, it appears on a computer and it gives you all this data. How much did the actual depth and curvature of the top vary originally back in the day? Well, okay, so that's the thing is like, you know, 64, like the, your Trini Lopez is a 64 with those pointed cutaways. Yeah. See, the reason for that is simply because the the rim shaping machines wore out over time. And so the, the, the look of the ears, the cutaways yeah. changes because the machinery would wear out because it was pretty difficult to, to press the rims into place. And then same thing happened with the top and back press. So at Memphis, they were using the original 1958 press and the it had kind of drifted. So the contours had kind of drifted off to the sides. So that's what we actually had to recut. We had to like scan all those original examples, recut it, and then make sure that that was um, arched in the exact perfect location, so. Crazy. The other uh, question I had was about your, your Trini. So that's one that yeah. we made. It's a 64 reissue Trini Lopez. And I know you, you love that when you pick that up. And can you tell us? You know, yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna grab yeah. it. I'm gonna be really honest. It's complete vanity why I like these. <laughs> it's, it's just something about it. It just looks, it kind of catches your eye. It looks a little different. A lot of people have played these recently. I know Dave Grohl has kind of basically become the representative mm -hmm. for these, but I, there was a guitar player in Atlanta, Peter Stroud, and I remember seeing Peter play one of these about 25 years ago, and it looked like it was from outer space, and because it looks like a 335, but just this crazy Firebird, he not reverse the, headstock. The Firebirds, yeah. And this, it just, it just jumped off the stage, you know? Well, I learned something uh, recently, I had never known this before, but the more I was thinking about how this model debuted, I think there were a couple shipped in 63, but the, the first full year of the Trini Lopez was 64. Well, that was a year ahead of the non-reverse Firebird, which is what that headstock really? is based on. So everybody calls that a Firebird headstock, but really it debuted on this model. No in kidding. So loud, acoustically. Yeah. 
which I thought was crazy when a guitar is loud. The acoustic and it's not hard to record yeah. usually. So Well what what is your preference if if I mean does it have to have both acoustic loudness and a great pickup to match it? Or is or sometimes is a pickup trump everything? No, I think it's the wood. Yeah. It's always the wood. I feel like you can get something with good wood and find the right pickup for it, but you can't yeah. I don't think you can make a guitar sound good. It doesn't sound good. I would agree with that. Otherwise, you can tweak all day long. But, you know, the other part of the checklist, again, is vanity. It's got to look cool. Yeah. You know, there's we're a lot doing... of great guitars that don't look cool. You know, but I remember I thought you were a dead ringer for a for a black one because we have a black one on the The black menu. is hip. But what, what I think you guys did with this is that, I don't know if you can really see it on camera, but you really nailed the red. Yep. And the, the kind of the figuring of the wood in the red. Yeah, that was and a labor just, of love. And just that too. Look at the back of the, the neck. The neck looks like an old, mm -hmm. you know, old Gibson neck to me. So you really got the coloring right. And I, I know it seems subtle. No, I think that's so important for me. Yeah. The red is right. What makes a great guitar, just not those little minute details about neck profile, but really, you know, the range of sound you can get out of each pickup. I think it's interesting though, when I, whenever I look for a guitar, I mean, the first thing I do is just go, and if it doesn't, <laughs> sound great i'm done i don't even plug it in you know well yeah we were talking about that yeah. earlier your signature uh yeah it's an e chord or, it or, took or, a lot of years yeah. to figure that chord out it's very difficult it's, to play. It's like, <laughs> are you just you like you do like <laughs> you spent two hours at custom shop pretty much just playing that over and over again but you know there's there's so many great guitar players and that can do incredible things but there's nothing more powerful to me as a kid when i hear the you know ACDC and all they're doing is yeah. so much power in that you know what I mean no, so much power and and that you taught me a lot that day because I don't think I'd ever really focused on the just the tone differences in playing the same thing on a variety of guitars yeah and it's a litmus and also too it's just there's a thing with guitars uh, a lot of old guitars sound amazing but the intonation is just shot or it's mm -hmm. hard to kind of wrangle it oh, that's true and so and even new guitars so i think when i do that too i'm looking for intonation like if it yep. sounds like a chord in tune yep and stays in tune and you know especially when you're higher up on the neck you mm -hmm. can tell yeah the, if the guitar intonates you know and that's something a lot of times with a, with a vintage guitar and i love vintage guitars i mean i've always been into them and, and worship them but a lot of times they get squirrely you know mm -hmm. up high so yep. it's, it's kind of nice to get something new that's hasn't been you know through tons of seasons and yep. weather that is in tune you know i think the older you get it's, it's kind of it feels like an adult guitar yeah you know it's what i mean it feels like you know refined you get a little chubby it kind of covers yeah. things oh, up yeah. you know i like it <laughs>